Well, this is the uh, Brian Callen Show. I've got Tom Segura. Tom Segura. Uh, S- uh, Segura has a what? What is that? What kind Spanish. Of name? Oh, Spanish. Yeah, that's Segura. why you have, you have such a Spanish look to you. Do it? No, I don't. Oh no, you do. You have a long aquiline nose, piercing, uh-huh. piercing Cas- Castilian eyes. Thank you. Yeah, and and uh, your, the symmetry in your shoulders is Spanish. Uh, honestly, breathtaking. <laughs> it's, it's breathtaking. Do you think I look like a Sephardic Jew? It, you look exactly like a Spanish Sephardic Jew. Yeah. Se- Segura were f- a famous family of Spanish rabbis mm-hmm. until they were forced to convert. You know the, your history. Yeah, by the Christians. I remember this. Or was it the Muslims? The, both of them. Uh, it was both. The Muslims, then the Christians, and then they were, they were, they were forced to convert. Um, but I don't know if you – you've seen my stand-up and obviously – I studied your yeah, stand-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I get a lot from I'm – the, I'm usually referred to as the comedian's – comic yes and um i i don't know if you know i'm i don't go buying a ticket but um a, f- this friday which would be uh, october 11th and then the 12th saturday and then on the lord's day the 13th mm-hmm. the sabbath i'm doing stand-up at the houston improv so great I, city that's a great town it's a great town and i hope they've bolted the stage down because i'll be bringing heat yeah and then i'll be in buffalo the weekend after that um, have you done Buffalo Helium? I'll be there. No, I did seventeenth, um, eighteenth, nineteenth. I did Philly Helium. Oh my god! Yeah, I've done the Philly Helium. I loved it. That's amazing. Did you like Club. it? I like. I, I like it. Philly, man. Yeah, it's awesome. Where are you going to be? Um, this weekend, the the tenth through the twelfth of October, I'll be at Comics at Foxwoods Comedy Club done and it. Casino. How was it? Done it in Connecticut. Yes. How is it? It's good. It's they, good? It's, yeah. It's, it's a casino in the middle of a forest. How's the casino? Is it a nice venue? Is it a nice yeah, casino? Yeah. I mean, it's – um, I think so. The room? How's I'm not the hotel crazy room? about casinos. I know. I know. I don't like being in one place where I can't go anywhere, but it certainly is – Good uh, restaurants in the casino? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, there's a steak place there. I ate some okay. steak. I met some friends from <clears throat> high school there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had good shows there. What about the gym? I mean, I fucking I got to do the gym every morning. All right, morning, dude. Every, well, you know, I mean, what kind of workout nice? are you looking to do? Because the, you know, what I would do is I would throw a knife in my teeth and I would go hunt deer because I was obviously in the middle of the woods. I yeah. it was poaching. I mean, I would yeah. get caught, but like they're going to catch me. Right. <laughs> like right. I don't disappear in the woods. Like 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 a search team would have a chance against Blink my and survival you're skills. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I blend in with the woods. Uh, what do you, what kind of workout are you looking to I mean, do? I, I want to do just like three hours of iron. And okay, that maybe... seems a lot. That seems a lot. Uh, three then, hours of iron. No then, wonder your shoulders are. Two cardio, two hours cardio, and then Jeez, that's it. That's five hours of exercise, dude. It's just what I want to do on like a Saturday. Is that what you do on a Saturday? You take five hours to. Well, really... I figure those kids are fucking playing ball on college. Yeah. You know, for me. Yeah. I go, I'll put my work in for you. Wow. That's the way I look at it. Wow. Give a little back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and do you find you use your because you're fairly stationary when you do your stand up. I mean, you're painful, <laughs> you're painfully funny, but it's not as though you're you're using moving your. Around. You're not you're not moving around a great deal, and yeah. I'm wondering why you would work out for five straight when, hours. When my uh, cousin, mm-hmm. you know, when people like in your life who you don't need like yeah, to hear yeah. criticism from, like you know, it's like it's one thing if like your agent or somebody, I don't know, maybe one of your friends, you're like, hey, what'd you think of my performance and. Fucking hangover, and they're right. like, you know what? I like them. Mo- and there's people that like, that critique you, that have like, no business critiquing you. It's like cousin- it's like my buddy who's a UFC fighter, uh, Brendan. Yeah. Literally, the Denny's waiter goes, "Dude, when you went for your double leg, you touched your knee. You don't want to do that, dude." Right. And, and he's like, like, "Are you are you kidding me? You're get me my fucking eggs and shut up." And also, you're welcome for the fucking not uh, tap out. Yeah. What bro. are you talking what are you, about? Why are you giving me advice? My cousin watched my uh, half hour. Special, right? I'm on Comedy Central. Yeah, yeah. All I need to hear from a cousin is like, great job. That's it. Yeah. That's Love, it. Loved watching you on TV. Right. That's where it needs to end. He's like, uh, watched your half hour. I'm like, thank you, man. He's like, well, hold on. I'm like, okay. oh, no. no. <laughs> he goes, and he knows well, he's not a, not a performer, like doesn't oh, do it. Oh, so great. And he goes, uh, you know, you, um, you're very still on stage. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, what I would do is um, maybe just little more movement, even if it's just reaching for that bottle of water. He's like, I would like to watch that more. That's just a little great. more. He's, he's your cousin's genius, and he's great. I yeah. need him to critique me. Oh, yeah. oh, he would. He's like, you know what I, what I enjoy? It's just a little, a little bit of activity going on would make it more fun to watch. And I was like, thank you, man. Do you have anything else you want to add? Like, and then I was kind of waiting for him to be like, otherwise I enjoyed it. He was like, no, that's it. Just work on that. 
Just work on that. Yeah. Work on your movement. What What does he do for a living? He's an editor. Well, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. He'd had to edit you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's yeah. visual. He's a visual guy. He should still shut up. You know what the best part about the editor? He's a gifted editor. He works a lot. He's mm. done a lot of television, done movies. The guy, for an, an editor, he can't tell you a fucking story, which I find so <laughs> hilarious. Because well, he can edit a story. He can't tell a story. There is a difference. Right, but he can't edit down telling you a story. In other words, if he tells you a story... Oh, he tells a long you're story. You're like, bro, just fucking get to the... Like, what happened? And, and A lot job, of women do that, by the way. It's a female thing. Very much. Uh. Women will describe the windowsill. That's true. And you're That's like, I, this is... You are killing me. And then they'll go off on a tangent on the person that they're going to tell a story about and how they got to know him 20 years ago. Right. You're like... Look, I'm taking deep breaths right now. I, I just, I'd rather stick something sharp in my eye than listen to this terrible story. They don't realize how much point. we appreciate a story. Not even, I'm, I don't even mean like performers. I mean off stage, just storytelling skills. You know, skills. my wife said, t- told me, she goes, we drove by this area and she goes, um, you know what? That the other day, we were looking for a parking space and a truck moved and we parked right there. <laughs> and you're like, and I, went, I waited and I went, that is a good story. <laughs> and she goes, fuck you. She goes, fuck you. And I was like, no, that is a, what kind of truck was it though? <laughs> like, don't ever waste my fucking time or I'm going to come How out long did you wait after he left to park there? Did you go right away or did you take a, a are you moment? A, are you a quick park? Did you pause in case or yeah, I, 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 that, that's the kind of thing. Although an editor, it makes sense that his mind works that way because what he was doing is he saw what you did and had to put in his two cents. Right. I kind of forgive that. No, I, I, because I, I he's know. an editor. He, and he works, you know, in the like under the, the umbrella of entertainment. My, my buddies, I was doing um, this arc on Seventh Heaven, and my buddy's father he said. Um, Tell Brian, uh, it's a good job. I'm watching him. He moves his head a little too much. Tell him to stop moving his head. Unbelievable. And he might have been right, but <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's amazing. It's okay. I guess. I guess if you want to tell a an actor or a performer something, I, I mean, I, it's something that comes to the territory. You kind of giggle, or maybe they're right. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But you know. The, the fighting thing cracks me up. When my oh buddies my who are pro fighters and people pro. say, you got to keep your hands up, bro. Hey, hey, dude, you've never been in a ring, never put on a glove. What yeah. the fuck are you talking about? What are you about? talking about? But everybody wants to feel like they can contribute. They That's also, life. You know, they also, they, they do that especially with team sports too, you know, basketball, football. Yeah, you know, oh you go God. on Twitter and they're oh, like, yeah. you need to fucking post up a little bit more in the paint. <laughs> it's like... You know, I think Coach will handle that this week. I don't know if he needs I've even you. done that about – I've done that with Chad Pennington of the of the Jets, who I loved as a quarterback, was always getting hurt. And, God, and, he got wrecked so well, much. Well, yeah, he was such a promising athlete. But I would always say – I'd be like, dude, you got to have a faster release. You're floating that ball. You're just floating it. Yeah. And, you know, that's almost part of the fun of watching sports. It is. The, and yeah, and I, I can't – but I but always think it's funny. That. They all know the that. The guys got to fucking they laugh when they open their Twitter and they're like, <sighs> oh, fucking – um, cardio two two one just yeah. tweeted me that I need to fucking yeah. you know lower my hips when I wrap up on these tackles whatever it's called <laughs> like it's stop just being a, an arm tackler yeah and you're like thanks pal like, I think that's a form of bonding among men it is right you know it's almost like that that's what guys do when a girl walks in and they'll they'll critique her and meanwhile you're looking at the guys going dude you you haven't eaten a vegetable in uh, you know ten years it, you shut up look you're a horror show and that girl's a Seven, the, and you're breaking her down. It's hor- the fattest guy I know is the loudest guy I know about no fat chicks allowed. <laughs> like he's the biggest fucking pig I've ever seen. Yeah, and he's like, I don't want anything to do with a fat chick. And I'm always like, Do you know do what you, you know look what like, you man? Are. Like you would look like a fat chick with a beard. That's what and you say to he's him. like, I don't give a fuck. And he just talks about how you would never. You know, I'm like, dude. Have, I, have you ever cat called a girl? Have I what? Have you ever cat called a chick from a car? Nah, it's not really my. No, I don't. I know you're a decent human being. I I can't ever see Tom Segura cat calling. I was with my friends. I've never done it either. I don't like that stuff because I just feel like I'm a, being a bully. I don't yeah. want to scare the girl. You yeah, know? I know. And uh, and also I'm just not a scumbag. Uh, and, and, but I was with a really great, really great guy. I, I didn't know him well, 
but he's friends with Artie Lang, and he's a great guy, and he's a really, really kind person. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I, I'll say his name. His name is Deech. He's a great guy. But it cracked me up because I was with Artie and and Deech and um, and somebody. This is a long. This is twenty years ago in New York City. And Deech was is the kindest human being in the world. He really is. But he was sitting behind me. I think I was driving, and this beautiful girl walks by in the village, and with high heels. And he literally goes like this in my ear. I didn't even. Realize, I got so startled. I just hear him go all day with you, all day, <laughs> all day with you, Jesus, with you. <laughs> and he was trying to be complimentary. He yeah. just meant like she's beautiful. And she got so she she start. I went with we the two of us went uh, like <laughs> what the fuck? Like he, his voice was so aggressive and loud, and he's kind of a big, handsome Italian kid. It's got to be so. Uh, it, you realize that it has to be somewhat of a curse to be a gorgeous woman in the world, right? Yeah, well, we forced, we forced her in the car. Well, yeah, uh, you guys have to do that. Yeah, no. Uh, it. I, well, I, I guess it'd get exhausting. It's kind of like being a celebrity. I think so, right? Yeah. Every guy wants to bang you. Right. Right? I mean, even if they don't, even if they're not going to bang you, they want to bang you. And, the, and you, get, um, you get looks that, that celebrities get, which is like, if you're a gorgeous woman, yeah. then you just get... People always, you know, they look, yeah. they're they looking down, they look up, and they're like, oh, hi. Have you ever had a, a beautiful woman um, tell you you're attractive and been shocked? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're a comic, so you get off stage, you're not a bad-looking guy. You're right. a big, burly bear of a man. But, yeah, and I, and you're like, uh, yeah, thrown by it. Yeah. I, I was on a plane, and I was um, – I wore a blazer, I'll wear, and I wear it now. I wear this blazer and this shirt all the time. What color blazer? What color it's shirt? It's a blue blazer, and I believe the shirt's uh, a cream. Custom-made cream. blazer? No, it's All Saints. It's what? It's All Saints. But my shoulders carry anything beautifully, as you know. You you look like you need bespoke, though. I mean, those are some, those well, are some cuts and curves in there. I don't see on most my, guys. My lower extremities, my, my legs, my, my ass, it just is obscene seen the way it pops out it's so athletic i mean i have the ass of a high jumper an olympic high jumper yeah uh and and to say nothing of my my well-developed quads and my calves my calves are popeye calves. i was studying all that in toronto yeah watching you move yeah and then you have my, the same problem as me you don't move on stage <laughs> yeah that's exactly right i stay very very still <laughs> i would never rob the masses of my movement because i, I am harmony i am supple i, I am like mercury uh, and that's not me. That's the New York Times. Yeah, 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 yeah. But my and then my waist is tiny. Anyway, but the point is, I I'm on the uh, I'm on a plane. Yeah, if, if you're on a plane, I, I, I slept most of the way. Mm-hmm. And then I get up and I'm, I go to the bathroom a couple of times. And there are these two very attractive um, stewardesses. And I noticed one of them had let her hair down. She was like this Spanish beauty and. And I was like, geez, you know, I was kind of looking, but not trying to be a creep. But I was right. like, he wish, you know, these girls are, what the hell are they doing being, you know, I mean, it's like they could model or Flight something. attendants. Yeah. What is this, 1963? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Where are your cellophane dresses, honey? Let me get a scotch and soda, please, with some <laughs> shaved ice. And um, and I, as I got off the, as I was getting off, and by the way, I'm flying coach. I'm not like you. I don't fly first class. I'm flying coach. Jesus Christ. And uh, as I get off, um, she st- grabs my arm. The, the, Whoa. Yeah, and she says, I just want you to know that all of us have a total crush on you. And we've been talking about you all flight. And and I went, and you know what I said? I literally, I was like, I was like, oh, oh. I was like, I'm, well, I'm so flattered. I'm, I'm married. Uh, too bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everybody was waiting. She stopped the line. And I, I it was the first time I was actually rather, I was a little embarrassed, which usually I wouldn't be. Usually I don't I know how to handle compliments like that. Not yeah. like that I get them all the time, but the times that I have, I, I'm, I'm the, like, ah, uh, uh. you're a shy man. Yeah, and I'm saying even like if I was when I was single, yeah, and I got hit on, and that's a perfect thing to go into. Yeah, the um, the you know the big compliment would throw me off. Well, I felt guilty as hell when I was banging both of them. You know that later right that there night. on the plane. No, later that night. Oh, later of that night. Yeah, you're I just decent. felt guilty not because I was doing it, but I, I just didn't use a condom, and they're pregnant now. But the point is this. Um, pause. 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 Anyway. Uh, you don't think they, they recognized you, though, and that's why they had a crush on you? They recognized you? I don't know. I, I, yeah, but probably. Can I tell you what I think probably. a big part of that is? What? I think a big part By of that. By the way, I didn't have sex with them. I'm kidding, everybody. You're a very handsome man, but uh, I don't think it's just that. I dyed my beard. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. But I think a big part of it is, in this day and age, there is no longer a really that much of a, a culture of dressing well, like that's the, true. it was used to be that's almost what I think. mandatory. That's right. 
and seeing a guy who's not in a business meeting suit and but stylish. Doesn't, stylish. It yeah. stands out. You go overseas. My God, when I was in London, walking down the street, I was pausing and turning my head at every dude walking around in yeah. this crazy. I know. Style. It looked. It looks, like, it looks, it looks great. awesome. Every guy looks like a million bucks. I there. wish I had a lifestyle sometimes that where I had to dress that way. I think about it all the time. Yeah, because you and I look at this. We showed up in fucking t-shirts and jeans. Yeah, and I'm in. I'm in Crocs. How great would we look in fucking suits right now? We should be in suits. In fact, I'm going to make it mandatory for any guest to come to my podcast to be Wear in suits. A, the Stokes. The, the you know, you'd be looking. Suit. Don't act like you wouldn't be charmed by our suits. I Marina would Marie be. would. Be. Yeah, I would be for yeah, sure. See, um, our our uh, lovely engineer Rena Marie uh, Villano um, I uh, <clears throat> I like uh, Europe is a place I've always fantasized I, I actually have a fantasy of being you know as I look in my in mirror it's funny as you get older you go well this is the best looking I'm going to be and, right. and, and tomorrow is going to be a little less and then the next day the, yeah. you know, I, I'm g- it's all downhill yeah. and it's okay I, I dyed my beard, uh, you know, just to see what it would look like. And I have to say, I'm, I'm, I still got it. The kid has still got it. I've, I still, no wonder they still call the me the kid. The great guy has still got the it. Guy, the, you, that's your nickname for me, the yeah, great guy. The great guy. I appreciate that. But I have a it fantasy of being a, um, I have a fantasy of being, I just did it. I, my buddy, Anthony, told me to do it. He goes, dye your beard. How'd you do it? You went and got I used that for men only. And which brown did you pick? Dark, Dark? brown. Does it does it work or no? It looks good. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just it took me five minutes. I was like, all do right. Do you I'll put try it, it everywhere? Is that how you yeah, do yeah, it? Yeah, I just did. I just combed it in, and then I washed it off. I, but I mean, uh, it works. I was surprised. I like, I don't give a shit about my see, beard. I got the, the only reason I actually did it was because I I saw myself on video, and I'm gray in weird places, so it looks like it's it looks spotty. It looks like I have holes. Yeah. So it doesn't look good on camera. It looks like I can't if I'm auditioning for something. It looks like shit. It's yeah. distracting. Right. I don't mind gray at all. But anyway. But I have this 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 fantasy of as I get older, I want to be, um, I want to smoke a pipe, I want to wear tweed jackets, mm-hmm. I want to sit and read leather bound books, and I want to um, I want to tell stories to my grandchildren. These are all good. good. Yeah, and I want a dog. I think I want a shepherd. I want a big German shepherd. Big German. A well trained German shepherd. A dog. A dog that means business. You, yeah. You can pet a dog. You can you can release in a playground because the dog understands to differentiate. You mm. understand? I speak this way as well. I think. I think as I get older, my voice, and as I become more and more educated, I think I'll, I'll probably speak not really as though I'm from England, but but certainly educated from the Northeast. You could wrap me up in any conversation. Thank you very much. That was really friend. good. I want to sit around. A fire. You have a good voice. Do you do voiceovers? No. Why? Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's a real, um, there's a real purr, a real resonance. Hmm. A real. There it is. I <laughs> mean, Maybe I should. I try. mean, for the Stradivarius violin. I mean, a man searches high and low for that particular wood. Well, you know what I'll do is I'll send a copy of this to my agent and manager and say, "What do you guys think?" <laughs> like that. Mm. Just that. I think you should just do this. What do you what do you, see how I can't my voice breaks. <laughs> yeah. But I still haven't reached full puberty. Yeah, you're, you're I'm just still a, I'm still growing. Wait, 12, 13? I I uh, physically I'm I'm 13 in the in my dick area. Can you can can I ask you this? Yes. You mentioned years ago you were hanging out in New York City with Artie Lang yes. and um more than anybody since I've started doing comedy People tell me I look like Artie. You Lang. look, you look so much like Artie to me. Really? Yes. And okay. what's funny is that uh, you look like Artie f- fifteen years ago. Is that there's a healthier Artie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. I mean, Artie, you know, by his own admission, has gone through the ringer with. Uh, well, sure. That's not. It's no substance, secret. Substance sure. abuse. But it ages you. But um, you have, you couldn't look more like Artie. Really? Yeah. I've never it's met him. It's crazy. I want to meet him now just so we He's can. He's the best. Artie Lang, Artie Lang, I did a podcast with Artie Lang. It's one of the funniest things. Artie Lang is, to me, I have to say, I think he's probably off the cuff funny for the funniest person I've ever met. That was what, that's why that uh, medium was so good for him. I mean, when he yeah. sat third mic on Stern, yeah. the guy chiming in, that, and there are guys like that. Yeah. You know, and that, that's the thing that people don't realize, too, about comedy yeah. that, like, only I think comics recognize the most mm-hmm. is that. One doesn't equal the other in so many things. A good comic on stage doesn't mean That's right. good off the cuff. Doesn't mean good actor. That's right. Doesn't mean good writer. Good writer doesn't mean good actor or good comic. That's good so tweeter true. doesn't mean any of the other. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. some people are gifted in that they are so good at multiple ones. But sometimes, a lot of times, 
it's they're good at one. Yeah, I, you know? I, I couldn't agree more. That's, that's actually 100% true. I, I think because it takes so much to get really good at one thing. I think that's right? it, true. I mean, yes. You know, I, I think I'll, I hope that I'm able to be not just a comic, and I'm happy with where I'm going with my stand-up, but um, I, I hope I can write a great script. Yeah, that's, that's my goal. Uh, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. Have I, you read Have you read the Anatomy of Story? No, you told me to. Well, to I just read had that. him on the podcast. Oh, you did? Oh man, he's he's going to be on. I, I don't know. If he, I think you're going to air, and then he'll air. But he, John Truby is uh, he's kind of astounding. He was a philosophy major in college. He's made a fortune as a script doctor. He is, you know, the man. Th- yeah, I mean, yeah. I think he. I think he's the guy that you go to when you, he speaks all over the world. But and I was just sort of awed with how he came up with the you know the sort of how to create basically a manual, the Bible on how to write because writing really? is a craft. Yeah. you have to read it. You have to read it. Everybody, I think the everybody should read it, even story. if you're not a writer. I think you should read it because um, it, it's it's a really interesting commentary on human beings and how human beings behave and think and what story really is which is really when you have a, a the, you know the protagonist and the antagonist the enemy and the the opponent you know the yeah. hero and his opponent it's really an argument uh, it's really a, a a moral argument for how both for, for how one should behave in the world the bad guy says might makes right usually and the good guy says something to the effect of no you know you've got to be kind to others and yeah. put yourself last i mean what that's one the classic archetype you know Mm-hmm. Kind of thing with, you know, uh, Star Wars, for example, the the the, the original myths, um, and stories are variations on on those kinds of themes. But the way he breaks stuff down, like he just talks about how a human being, in a in certainly a hero, has a desire. Mm-hmm. Y- you know, you 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 desire um, something, and you desire the girl, but in the end, you actually have a very different need. So most of what we as human beings have a desire. This town's full of people who have a desire for fame and money. Right. They don't need that. They need something else. Right. They're they're chasing that. They're climbing that wall. And when they get to the top of that wall, hopefully they realize, oh no, I don't like the view up here, or this was the wrong wall. Mm-hmm. I gotta actually what I've needed has been here all along. That's right. kind of the idea. I mean, and I think that resonates. I think it resonates with us in metaphorical form. Uh, i.e. story whether it's play or book or or movie because it's inside of us because we have natural sort of original nostalgia for that kind of Mm -hmm. motif i think we inherently understand that that is good unless you're a sociopath i think most of us have a gnawing a lot of sociopaths in this town there are but a lot of us have a gnawing a gnawing understanding that uh, of the, of the, of a certain kind of presence that presence being um there is a moral way to live and and usually yeah. we're we're usually we're kind of <clears throat> brushing it we're going back and forth and we're touching it but mm-hmm. we're not living in it and that's not easy to do why do you think i mean you have an understanding so obviously of story and um what makes a good story why are so many Hollywood movies so bad right now. Don't you feel like this is a horrible I era? Think Every fucking it's a, it's, week, it's, it's a, a golden age of movie. TV, right? Because you have serial TV, you have more time to develop characters. Whereas I think movies, I think one of the problems with movies, and one of the reasons that movies are suffering the way they are, maybe, is because the it's become so expensive, and you are catering to an overseas crowd. But I think also. I actually believe that it's it's the way the structure of Hollywood works sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, and I'll explain what I mean. D- there is no question that there is a way to make a great movie, yeah. And those rules and principles are violated all the time in Hollywood. It, in the in the name of expediency, uh, they will take a shortcut by using a very famous guy or you know yeah. girl, and they think that's going to compensate. Um, but if the story is structure, if it's not on the page first, I would I would su- I would suggest that that's why you'll you'll never get a movie off the ground. You have to have a good story before you do anything, yeah. and then the rest is there are five five hundred different moving parts. But um, I think that the reason you don't see the kinds of movies that you should is because the people with power are the people with the purse strings more so than ever before. Mm-hmm. I would imagine. I might be naive about this, but I think for the most part. The people making the decisions are not the director as much. They are yeah. the studio. They right. are the number crunchers. They are the people that looking at everybody as a number. Mm-hmm. Um, the other idea, though, I think, is that there's not a lot of original 
thought and talent. It, the, 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 what happens is you get an, a, a, a sort of an idea and then you put a bunch of talented people around that idea. What they forget is that the idea and its execution has to come usually from one single inspira- inspirational source. Sure. Think about any great movie or any great uh, TV show or any – I mean Vince Gilligan's Breaking Bad. That, was, that came from him, from soup to nuts. And then when you have – you know, when the inspiration has been completed, when that circle has been closed, then you add a bunch of people who are good at executing yeah. the idea. But you have to have, but I don't believe that things, I don't believe greatness comes from necessarily collaboration. Uh, great art comes from collaboration. I don't even believe great anything comes from collaboration until later. The, the initial inspiration, whether it's nuclear fusion, I mean, Nobody helped Einstein develop the theory of relativity and and push him along to you know what now the unification theory the notion yeah. of string theory or whatever it might be or n- nobody nobody helped Newton f- f- come up with the proofs that allowed him to work fig uh, Newtons. create to fig Newtons formulate the theory of gravity gravity mm-hmm. uh, centripetal force um, 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 calculus. Those theorems were thought up by him alone in a room. Now, he said that uh, if I've seen further than other men, it's only because I've stood on the on the shoulders of giants. He was speaking, by the way, of Copernicus and Galileo and those people that came before him or were his contemporaries. But I, I'm just saying that I think that overall Hollywood makes the mistake of not understanding that Inspiration comes from a single source first. Your standard, which is great, by the way, Thanks, all bullshit buddy. aside, and it really is. You're a c- real comic, and w- when I when I when I say we we performed for three thousand people, and I was watching you, and you were standing still with a mic in front of three thousand strangers and and destroying them, and uh, you know that. That didn't come from anybody helping you. That came from you mining who the fuck you are and what makes you laugh in a room alone. Right. And the goodies come from from them thar hills, man. And then then you can have then you have a mic and you need lighting and you need a theater right, right. and you need people. The execution to, yeah, you need collaboration. Yeah, but but nobody helped you do that create that particular skill set. Right. Which is very difficult. You know, very few people can do that, at least on, on the caliber that you do it. You're a very passionate guy. I like that. Yeah. I think life is worth being passionate about. I, I, I think if you're bored about life, you're a, you're a dumb dumb. Yeah. And, and hopefully this podcast, I swear to God, the, the idea behind it is I make, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not going to get me rich, but the, the idea of this podcast is to figure out a way to create my own pocket of inspiration for sure. people who are younger. You know, I, I do the... um. I do a podcast twice a week with my wife, which is like our. I love that you do that with our your bread wife. and butter. Yeah, it's so awesome. It's and called you... your mom's house, right? And, it, and it's just it's silly. And the entire goal of that show is just the intent is to make people laugh. I mean, yeah. the show is done. It's great. It's with audio drops, and it's just really, of course. Oh yeah, I mean, it's just it's silly. I got to do. I, I love that. It's so much fun. But on top of that, I realized that I love just I love talking about football. So I created a second podcast where every week I just get somebody on the phone. Like um, I had Lorenzo Neal and Brian, uh, Bill Burr call in. Right. And we just talk about football. And then I put it out there just like not to make money. Or anything, it's just because I realize I enjoy talking about football. It doesn't fit the other show that I have going on. So I just say, This is like what I do with um, the 10-minute podcast or the fighter and the kid with sure. Brennan Chubb. It's like, you know. I mean, we're on Fox, and it's, I guess it's doing really well. But, but, but you know, for the most part, it, we just started because I wanted to talk about fighting. Sure. I love it. Yeah. I love, I love talking about football. I what is your um, – who, who is your team? Um, well, I'm a, I'm a bigger college fan than I am an NFL fan, mm. and I'm a Florida State fan. And oh. having a great, great year so far. Big game in two weeks versus Clemson. What's, what's your call on Tebow? Is he going to be – is he going to be um, – I mean, I think he's got offers. But he's a lot for being a tight end. I, right? Yeah, I think if if he sticks to his guns about um, demanding that he has to play quarterback, which is his dream and what he wants to do, I feel like it's not going to happen. Um, he's not going to get picked up. Why? Signed. Why is it so hard for Tim Tebow to play quarterback in the NFL? You know, it, he's such a big, strong, 
guy with such a great attitude and such a work ethic. Is it that hard to change your throw? It is that hard. Jesus. Not that many people can do it. The big criticism of his throw is the mechanics of it. Just he telegraphs where he's throwing. Yeah. And you can't give up. I mean, the, the window is so much smaller. In the pros. And then and that's the one thing that's so different. Now, I will say in his defense, he did – Go on a run when he was in Denver. Started that was he won games. The, that was before Denver and before those defenses figured him out. Right? Yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is that I think the you you have the measurables and and you can say that you know his throwing motion is this and you know he might not be this and that and you go that's what's wrong. But there is something to be said in all sports, whether yeah. you're talking about MMA stuff or you're talking about baseball or football or basketball, the guy is a proven winner. I mean, yeah. people love him in the locker room. They love him He's on the field. He's a great guy from what I hear. Everybody loves him. My buddy Brennan's him. a good friend. I mean, just, oh, really? Yeah, and Brennan just yeah. – Brennan, Brennan defends it, man. Brennan likes him so much that if you say anything about Tim – even that he's not going to play quarterback in you know the NFL, Brennan Brennan will jump to his defense. Really? I, yeah, I, I mean he 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 elicits that. You can't help but love the guy. Apparently, I think that, and I think everybody that comes in contact with the guy feels that way. I still think he's not going to play any more quarterback. It's such a bummer. I know he could be H back. He could be a fullback. He could be. Well, that's what they're talking about making him. But isn't that a whole different position? Does, isn't that hard? It's a completely to, different position. But the guy, he's a beast. You know, he's, he's one beast. of the guys. Brennan, Brennan, yeah, big Brennan. Oh is. my, yeah. T- Tebow's stronger than Brennan. Absolutely. I when mean, when when Tim Tebow was at University of Florida and their starting Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, they had to tell him to stop bench pressing because he was getting so swollen, and they were scared a that he might injure himself, but b they're like, we don't need you to bench four forty. Yeah. yeah, you don't need a, your quarterback. And he, I mean, you know, but he trucked people. I mean, he yeah, would absolutely. Yeah, he just moves huge oh my God. amounts of weight. He's huge. And a handsome son of a bitch. Handsome son of a bitch. And if that dude wants to put his hand in the dirt and play tight end or fullback, I bet you he could do it. He's, yeah. he's a good enough he's a, athlete. He's, just, he's a good enough athlete. No absolutely. Well, that much of a workforce. I just don't think it's going to happen for Damn him. Damn it. Quarterback. I just don't think it's going to happen. But, you know, I Isn't definitely that crazy? wish him. I, it is crazy. I mean, and, the pa- when Belichick, when they brought him into the, you know, the tryouts or in training camp and he didn't make it. It's it's and, and uh, which I didn't thing. realize. I don't I know that not, much about football. I'm not a homer. I, I I he went to the school that I'm a yeah. f- that I hate the most. That's right. Because I'm a Florida State fan. Uh, yeah, but I'm know. a reasonable fan, and I can tell you when like who's good and who. I don't, I don't just see it like yeah. you know. Well, that's why I asked you though, because you you are on the you are on the receiving end of oh, he, and he, of, of that kind of pain. Oh my God, he dished it out, and he's you know he's the other thing. The people that play with him are inspired by him. Guys that, that yeah. are his teammates. He's one of those guys that really does light up a room and people are inspired to be around it's him. It's got to be tough though when you, you know, I don't know, when you when you realize you can't do the one thing that, that you t- want. I know. You can say whatever you want, but when they when somebody takes that away from you, damn, man. You're not going to do it, man. You better have a faith in God cuz I don't know yeah. what I would do. I know. My my God is, you know, the the notion of potential and discovery, Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, I you know, that's what I that's what I think about. Hey, do you want to write? I kept thinking about this. Do you want to write? Um, the, you know, you say you want to write a great script. Does it? Do you want it to be a comedy or a, a drama or like a specific genre? I just genre? you know, it'll be a comedy to an extent. But I, I I think the movies that spoke to me the most were movies like Breakfast Club, the John Hughes films. Oh wow, yeah. You know, um, th- th- those were you know, but I, then there was the ra- there was Raging Bull, and there was you know, but. I just love stories of um, redemption and stories uh, where somebody basically starts as a boy and ends as a man. Yeah. I like that. I love that motif. I love the question. I'm exploring always the question of what is a man? What is masculinity? How do you navigate that in today's world? Is a big part of that um, your father? I don't know. I suppose. I mean, I grew up with this sort of archetypal father, you know, but but it, m- more than that, it might have been just my own inadequacies in the face of what I consider to be uh-huh. great masculinity. But also uh, a feeling like a man, feeling I'm, – I'm aggressive, man. Yeah. I'm fucking – you know, I am – I am. I've never felt more at home than when I when I used to 
fight, you know, or wrestle, or you know, I, I miss that. I still do it. We are made to feel bad somewhat in this in this uh, culture about being aggressive, too, aggressive, and being, or into being it. Yeah. stereotypically male. I yes, suppose. that's true. But no, I, I I reject that. I can't stand people like that. I don't listen to that bullshit. I think it's a lie. I think they're the ones lying. Yeah, I I pay attention to my DNA. I I I, I pay attention to the flesh as well as the spirit. There's a there's this both are competing with each other. But mm-hmm. I feed the um, I feed the the beast. You know, feed if it, it means I want to punch uh, mitts and pretend I'm a fighter. If it means I want to roll around and do jujitsu and and try to lock somebody in a darce choke or something. Whatever the case, I, there's something very satisfying about imposing my will on another man who's bigger and realizing maybe I could beat him up if I was in a prison yard. Yeah. yeah it's artificial and simulated, but I don't care. It sure. makes me, it calms me down. I'll masturbate in a public park. Well, now, hold on. Now, you just took a turn there. I, I'm just, no, I'm I was saying because about... I'm a man and I'll do what I want. Give and, it that... and if I'll do it on a man who's no. eating a sandwich. No, no, no. I'm going to have to ask you. No, no, no. I'm going to have to ask you to not use that as an example. I, I just... It's a perfect example. No. It's exactly in line with what you were just no, saying. No, see, but it's not. No, I feel like you really made a left turn here. What are you talking about? Well, that's illegal. And also, no, it's not. you want to mess with a man eating a sandwich. You're being the enemy well, of masculinity. I'm a guy. I, I'm in the park. Yeah. I feel like releasing myself well, on somebody eating a sandwich. Yeah, but do you know the guy? No, of course well, not. Well, you can't just come on a sandwich eater. I'm a Christ. bigger man than him. I can do what that, I want you're to You're being him. a... That is outrageous. It's sexual misconduct, and, and I'm putting it lightly, and you're just going to walk up and just dump on him? See, you're the problem. No, I'm not the problem. You can't exactly just come on guys who are eating a sandwich. You can't come the, on guys, period, unless it's consensual. You're the problem with society today, trying to tell guys when and who <laughs> and why they should not come on no, somebody. No, I'm, that's not what I was talking about, man. I, I thought it... I mi- may have misunderstood you. You did misunderstand me. You're, you're... Damn it. You can never get the metaphor and the train of thought that I'm trying to, I'm I'm trying to arrive I'm at. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Sorry. I've only done that like three or four times since yeah. I was drunk. It's fine. You eating that sandwich? <laughs> and then you drop your card. You drop your stand. Come to my show sometime. Yeah, we're in the improv on Saturday. Uh, <laughs> what, what noise do you make when you have a, an orgasm? All right, think. Um, I go, uh, uh, Oh, well, that's fucking gross. Uh, <laughs> And then I go. Why are you looking up, dude? Because I, I I'm trying to picture it, and then I'm also a lot of times my eyes roll back. Oh God, no, uh, no. And then I go. <laughs> oh like God, at the end. why do you do that? Yeah, that's it feels the, that's so the good. final. I shoot unbelievable. Really? Amounts. You must yes. have a you must have a tiny prostate or a big prostate. I don't know which it is. You but shoot I've asked, heavy. You shoot heavy loads. Big time. Jesus Christ! You know dude. how um, your penis contracts? Yeah, I guess. Well, you know that that pump. I don't know what it's called. You know what I mean when you have an sure. orgasm. Sure. Sure. My minimal count. I've studied this quite a bit on myself. Yeah. Is around eleven or twelve. Are you kidding me? And sometimes I get up to like. The upper teens. What are you talking about? Yeah. Why are you not doing pornography? Well, I just, it's just a different path. Do you ever just go, I'm glazing you? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's do you ever a say, lot. Do you ever just say, this is for you? Yeah, I always go, what I try do to do is- you ever God bless somebody? Like, God well, bless you. I try to go- um, Sorry for anybody who's religious. I always go like, sorry it wasn't that much. When when I know it's a lot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's that's crazy talk. Yeah. Do you not? Well, tell me how many you shoot, so I can. Know. Not. No. I, I'm. I'm. I don't. Not very. Very average in that sense. What is average? I don't even know. Like a half a cup. But I mean, like no. how many pumps? No. Um, I don't know. One, I, two. You can count in your head. Yeah, Picture. I, I, I'll, I haven't actually. I'm usually um, hunched over, and my knees are locked, and I'm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm and I have I usually have a whip in my other hand, <laughs> but I'm whipping myself. Right, right, right. I'm so guilty. Yes. <laughs> uh, 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 Tom's and Gora. I, I say that uh, sometimes. I I try to get my friends, my married friends, to um, say that one's for Tom when they have sex with their <laughs> wife. I only got one to do it though, and. Um, and didn't really go. It wasn't well. received well. Well, yeah, he said because um, it was like I I asked him to do it. He he called me and said um, happy birthday and I was like you know what it'd be a cool birthday present because he lives in Atlanta yeah so when you have sex with your wife tonight yeah say did he videotape it or at least audio tape it he did not I wish I could have got if you if, what do you want to say when you die what do I want to say like the yeah. last thing I want to say yeah that's the one thing if you could say Whoa. one cool thing that's a heavy question yeah I think 
I think I would say, um, like maybe, um, uh, I, w- I wish I had more poached eggs. <laughs> That's pretty profound. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Huh. I love poached eggs. Yeah. Yeah. I like poached eggs too. What would you say when you die? Um, I'd probably just say, you're welcome. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. I would, I would if die, I saw I would die, you. Obviously, as you can tell, I would die coming. You're welcome. <laughs> if I saw you die, yeah. I would say, there goes the great guy. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then you would weep. Oh, you would weep at more than, more than 15 pumps. I told you this in Toronto. I want to see you more often. Yeah, we got to spend more time together. This is ridiculous. And this podcast went by fast. I know. Can we do a gig together, though? Yeah, I, I, I swear to God, anytime you want. Really? Yeah. Like, like, let's fly somewhere. I would I would love to do that. Why don't we do that? It's ridic- I'd love to actually do uh, make that a, a point. Who who books you? Um, I mean, you want you want my... Uh, his... We'll talk about okay. it. Okay. Um, hold on. Let's pick, let's, both, let's pick a market that w- is not strong for either of us. All right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have no idea. I think Houston's going to be good. No, by Houston's going to be I'll be in Houston great. this weekend. Yes. You guys... Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I'll be in Buffalo the next weekend. Then I'll be in Calgary, um, and then I'll be in San Diego. I'm <clears throat> I'm going to be at uh, Comics at Foxwoods in Connecticut this weekend, the 10th through the 12th, and then the first weekend in November, I'm running my hour at Flappers in Burbank. Wow, November 2nd and 3rd, and then next weekend I shoot it in Minneapolis, November 9th. Oh. So if you're in Minneapolis, you can awesome. um, come Why see me. Why in Minneapolis? 